Hey everyone, how you all doing? My name is Tommy and I'm a portrait photographer from Melbourne and we've just finished shooting a three photographer, one model video with Julian Lello, a pic from Paul and Bianca, where we shot at different locations with different outfits and under a three minute time limit. It was a really fun video to make and that is coming up on Julian Lello's channel, so make sure you check that out. In this video, I'm gonna be showing my Lightroom editing process from start to finish. Hope you guys can follow along and learn something new along the way. Without further ado, let's get it started. So now we've imported our photos into Lightroom and I've already made my selection on which photos I want to use. And the first thing I want to do is start by editing my favorite photo. Usually I do this because I can nail the edits and the color on the first time and then I can just transfer all of these colors into the other edits. So my favorite photo is probably this one. I really like how we've got Bianca in the shadow in here and I think it looks really cool. So let's try it at this one. I'm not going to use any presets for this edit so I can show you my process. Hopefully you guys can follow along as well. First thing I want to do is I'm going to reduce the contrast a little bit. I'm going to bring out some of those shadows and maybe I'm going to try out the highlights here. I do want the car a little bit brighter and I don't mind that she is fully like in the shadow here. I think it adds to the mood of the photo but I'm going to bring the shadows out a tiny bit adjust the whites. I'm pretty happy with the white level. Might reduce a tiny bit. Blacks I'm pretty happy with at the moment. I'm going to leave all these and then I want to go straight into my tone curve. So I really love using tone curve to modify the photo and like edit it to how I want. I do want it to look slightly blown out because I think that makes it look very natural and in the moment. It doesn't have to be perfectly colored like I really don't really go I don't really go for perfection a lot so we've got to play around with these colors do you like that grungy look and I also want this to look kind of like filmy colors so right now you can see the main colors in here are the blue which are matching in the sky and the jeans I definitely want to keep that um, then we also got her skin tone kind of matching with these leaves so that's the orange and yellow we're going to try to take out the greenery in the back or aim to reduce it just so we have that like two-tone palette cool so i'm going to play around with this a bit more so where i'm fading the blacks great cool and then i'm going to jump into the blue channel yeah great i want a bit of warmth in the shadow a bit of warmth in the highlight as well maybe that's a bit too much now that I look at that again back at it again so I'm going to try a different method a lot of what I do is just <laughs> experimenting as well um, so I don't always have a set thing that I do with every edit it kind of changes per shoot it's hard to keep it consistent but that's not always the point is it Let's see what the yellow is I'm going to maybe reduce the yellows a tiny bit I want to increase some of that orange so we get a bit more of a skin coming in that way is going to focus a bit more on her skin tones and then with the blues I want to reduce them a tiny bit cool and then let's see with the green color I want to reduce it to around halfway to yellow and then we're going to we're also going to reduce the contrast sorry the saturation of the green but we're going to increase, I oh know, we're going to keep it. Because you can see if we do luminance all the way in green, we get this halo. And I don't want to change the luminance on the yellow at the moment as well. Yeah, so I think I'll just increase them a tiny bit, but not all the way to 100. So play around with the hue slider for yellow. So this is mainly touching her skin and also the leaves in the back. So find a hue that we like pretty happy with this and i want to increase the saturation of the red a tiny bit awesome split turning do i want to split turning in this image i want to play around with the shadows first so I just have a tiny bit so it's a bit warmer in the shadows see how that gives it that bit of warmth just because i did a tiny bit touch on 15 so 15 hues around that slightly red orange look and then five is just the tiny bit amount that you need so I'll show you before and after with the split turning. Before and after, before and after. It's just given her face a little bit more color because we've got that bit of um, 
red, that warmth in the back. We're going to experiment with the highlights bit turning. So if you hold down option on your keyboard and you hit hue, then you can see what each hue looks like at 100% saturation. We're going to try it at 205. See if we like that. Oh yeah, a little bit. Might just go like 7. Just so we get that touch of blue again, that little bit of balance. I'm going to check this photo out before and after. Before and after. Great, I am pretty happy with that so far. Touch of sharpening. I am... Do I want lens correction? I'm going to enable it first. Let's see... I'm going to try a light grey. We're going to reduce the vignetting all the way down. I want to add a bit of grain to it just so it feels a tiny bit like vintage, tiny bit filmy. It doesn't have to go, the message doesn't have to go across the whole way, it just needs to feel subtle. So you can't really see this immediately. Might give it a bit more. Let's try 50, 50, 50. So now, now it's more evident, um, but it might be a bit too much. I'm going to bring it back down to 40 amount. I like the size and the roughness. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. This looks pretty good. Calibration. Not sure if I want to touch it, but let's have a look right now. At first glance, the blues are coming in very strong. Blues are coming in very strong. So I'm going to play around with the saturation here. So if we reduce the saturation of the blues, and obviously the oranges get a bit more focus and attention upon first glance. And if we bring it all the way up, then you get a lot of blue. The only problem is when you get a lot of blue is that although it does look quite nice on like the sky and the jeans and the window here, you lose some of that attention to the face, which is in a way the point of the photo. So I'm actually going to reduce it a tiny bit. See if I would need to change up the hue. Maybe give it a slight push. And then I'm going to increase the saturation again of the oranges. Yeah, cool. So now it's very intense on the orange, and I kind of like that. I kind of like that this image isn't fully bright. It's not fully exposed, but we'll play around with the exposure a tiny bit. At 0.5, it looks okay. Let's try 0.3. looks good as well. The only problem is that it looks very bright around here, and it doesn't perfectly match, I think. As in, it doesn't perfectly align. So I might want to give it a slight tint to it. Might come in the blue channel. And give it that slight nudge. So there's a tiny bit of yellow here in the in the highlights, in the whites. And I think with a bit more vignetting, it might do it. Let's have a look. It's already a very high contrast image. And that might be it. It might be a bit too high contrast. I'm going to try to reduce the contrast. This is all that style at the moment. It's like, what do I prefer? So I'm going to adjust the whites a little bit. Just so we can get a bit more contrast on her face at first glance. Because coming in first with this photo, it's, it's good, but maybe it lacks a bit of depth. This was shot at 2.2 aperture. If I went down to 1.4, it might have been a tiny bit nicer but we would have had her hand a bit out of focus. Um, but that's the kind of thing you're looking for with photos is that you want to make sure that the attention is there at first glance. But in saying that, I'm pretty happy with this so far. What I might do is I might give it a small gradual filter in the lighten. So maybe in the darken. I, I want the bottom to be a bit darker. So I'm going to slide this up a little bit. Maybe around to halfway. And we're just going to decrease the saturation a tiny bit just so we're, we've kind of angled the lighting in a very natural way so here obviously the attention goes much more to the eyes than before before and after before and after that looks really good I'm pretty happy with this I might do a slight push on the eyes so I've got a filter for eyes and this just gives it a tiny bit of glow a tiny bit of extra attention. Good, I'm pretty cool with this. And then we're going to give it a slight dodge and burn just in here. I'll show you guys how easy it can be. Good, so that's the dodge. And a slight burn, let's see. Not looking for perfect here. 
cool. See, I have got that bit of highlight there. That's what we want. We're going to add a tiny bit of a burn just below her neck here. And what that does is it's going to add a bit of separation between her neck and her chin. That's a bit too much. Let's make it 0 0.15. And take a look at our range. We're softening that up a little bit. Cool. So let's check that out. Awesome. Just so we got a bit of separation there, which might even be a bit too intense. I'm gonna set it with this one because I'm pretty happy with it. I think it looks really good. Time to apply a very similar look to another photo. Let's have a look at these all together now. One more time. And I'm pretty happy with this all together. I think these photos look really good. All right, time to move on to the next location. So this was a difficult location to use. Honestly, it was a bit of a struggle. This was a pause pick, but we're trying to use it in a photo right now. So what I really like about this photo is the shadows again. And we're going to edit them in a similar way to the previous one. So I want to give it that film look first so I know so I kind of know what I'm going for. Great, just a bit of touch up. And I like that contrast. I think I might just bump up the shadows a tiny bit. Down or up. Up's a bit distracting. Down's a bit too much. Let's leave it for now. Highlights, I do want that tiny bit of like white highlight on her face. So I want to reduce it just a tiny bit. And let's see, I'm gonna edit blacks now I think we need to bring out the blacks a tiny bit cool so I'm just looking at the blacks and seeing how intense I want it I kind of want this photo like, a tiny bit more of that classic fade faded look but I don't want it to look too round as well I still want it to look kind of flat so I'm going to reduce the contrast all together okay let's run with this for a sec and see how we go I'm going to go into the let's say the red channel this time let's see where I want to position everything. All right, and we are going into, let's say the green module. Yeah, I like that tiny bit of green. Because we've added a bit more green to it, it kind of matches with all of this greenery on the side as well. And we've got that pink as well. So we've got that green and pink combo, which is nice. Let's go into the blue channel and see if we need to make it warmer or cooler. I do prefer the warmer side. Check the shadows as well. Yeah, I think that tiny bit warmer, it looks better in my opinion. Great. So now going to hue, and we're gonna see what we are going to change. Cool, that looks good. That really brings out her eyes in this one. And see, I've been thinking about cropping it the whole time. Might as well do it. So now I've got that asymmetry happening. Let's see how that looks. Is that right? It looks a bit too high. It, it does look balanced, but it looks a bit too high. Cool. It feels balanced here. It feels pretty good. Because now I've got her back against it. Let's try coming in a tiny bit just so her, her eye is on the middle line again. And this obviously gives a lot more attention to her, but I think if it was too much on the side right now, I think I do want that little bit of like, a little bit more flower as a foreground because we're showing that off. And we want that tiny bit more depth in the back, I think. In this part, you can see it's just coming, it's just peeking out here, but we can edit that out in Photoshop. Let's try this again. I think we do want more of that background. I think this was good. This one gives a really nice balance to it. And I think this extra part here, we can definitely just crop it out in Photoshop or something. Resuming back on the edit, we're in HSL. What am I gonna do with this red? Let's see what red looks like when we change it up. I do maybe prefer it on the blue side. I mean, sorry, the orange side. Great. Yeah, I think given that yellow more to the orange lends that bit of like a more focused color palette versus this. So we wanna go not all the way, but let's say to 90. Oranges, I think we can keep. I'm pretty happy with how the oranges look. All right. Let's 
let's see the saturation on the red as well. I think I'll leave it as is for this one. Check out the blues. I don't want the blues to go all the way because we want that tiny bit of blue there. But I'm going to reduce it a tiny bit. And here. I think one thing to remember is there's really no right or wrong. It's all about what your own personal style is and how you want to convey your own expression and your own idea with the photo. Cool, I'm pretty happy with this kind of blown out look. And let's see the blues. Yeah, I think a bit darker is better than lighter. Great. All right, now we are going to split toning. So coming to here, let's see what we like. I think I might prefer a blue and a more teal one at that. So let's say 100. Oh, or not maybe we'll see we're going to hold down go down down to 180 let's go before and after no, i think we lose a lot of that that um that warm characteristic if we go down to blue so let's try another one of mine which is about 70. yeah i think that just pushes out the warmth a bit more which i do like all right shadows Let's see if anything, let's try a cooler shadow to contrast. So 210, let's say. Let's look at that cool shadow in the back. It's probably a bit too much. I kind of don't mind having it slightly there, but let's try green as well. Green's not the right color. Purple? Purple looks good. Purple kind of matches the flowers. I think that's a bit too intense though. Let's try it like 240. What we want to create is that nice palette. 10 looks good. I like that. Okay, we're going to remove this now because it's a bit distracting. Let's do it in here. Perfect. So, continuing on. Pretty happy with all of these ones, I believe. The yellows. Okay, cool. I want a tiny bit of luminous in the red. We want to sharpness. I think with this one, we do want that vignetting because we've got that foreground subject that is kind of hiding her a little bit. So we want to keep that. Tiny bit of vignetting here. 20 is probably too much. Let's go with 10. Let's try 15. Yeah, feels right. So now we're going to calibration again. Just so our final few tweaks with the balance of the colors. 13 is a bit too much. I feel like this looks pretty natural. Let's see if we want to make it a bit intense or not. I feel pretty good about it just as default. It's a bit too intense. It's a bit too focused on the flower. So making her skin a bit pink, which is good. I might keep it here. I'm pretty happy with this. Cool. So now we're going to see the before and after with the calibration. Very subtle, but it just brings out the oranges a bit more and the pinks. And now before and after the whole entire photo. Cool, I'm liking that pink palette. It's really subtle. It's something that you wouldn't really notice in the photo, but there's a there's a tint of pink to it. I'm gonna apply the same kind of settings to this photo. And then comparing it all three together. All right, let's move on to the next, next set, which is this really beautiful brick wall with a lot of these dry vines and autumn leaves on it. Cool, so let's start with, so these photos are very different altogether, very different lighting situations in all of them. So it's gonna be a bit of a struggle, but let's work through it. These ones will all require a different kind of edit, I think. So we won't be able to transfer them more similarly with the previous ones. All right, so this one was backlit. And obviously it's very low contrast and we are going to try to make this photo look good. Do I like the angle? Let's try straighten it. It's not fully straight, but I don't mind it. If anything, I want her to be more on the side like that. I think it looks good. Cool. And then let's give this photo a bit of contrast. I do really like um, backlit photos. 
think it really gets in the most most cases the outcome is good and I don't mind that extra bit of like blown out background like I think it kind of adds to it sometimes let's go with the reverse way with the tint all right there is a lot of pinks that I'm noticing so maybe we'll try to um, reverse that with the split toning so let's go with the green so I've got that green tint now which is good so now what that did was it just removed a bit of the pink in the whole photo so now that green gives that bit more of a daytime feel and let's go with a tiny bit of yeah orange red I should say so a tiny bit let's say half the amount of the highlights just more to the orange side so we've got a tiny bit of red to contrast with her orange skin tone I don't want to make her skin look red and then let's try to reduce the yellows again so we've got more focused palette I think I yeah I don't want the yellows in here because there's too much of the same orange yellow in it I want to reduce the amount but I do want to increase the orange so looks like this this is the best photo I could have got in this location honestly this location was a bit hard to shoot but um we're working with photos right now we're working with photos so what I want is to obviously separate and isolate her skin and make it different from the brick so we are comparing the yellows the yellow hue right now and if I make a green yeah it gets to more of like that daytime look if we go to orange it's like that really typical orange look which I don't know if it's what I want so it might just make it a little bit to this side we'll stick with this first and we'll just play around the colors again I can see this is a difficult photo to use obviously not every photo is going to be nice and simple and this sometimes just happens on shoots you never know what you're going to get and you never know how you're going to edit them as well cool I like this it just looks more coordinated at this point which is good through this much add a tiny bit less of this a tiny bit a bit more of this let's try a bit more red let's try it makes the reds look more red good Okay, this is coming together. So before, after. All right, make some good changes here. Yeah, we still want that vignetting just so it focuses in on her. Let's give it that grain look. I don't have a particular order. To me, it doesn't really matter too much because I know I'm going to revisit it. A tiny bit of contrast, a little bit of fade. I feel like in this photo, there's probably a tiny bit too much grain and it's really coming in through the, the heart as well. So I might reduce that. Just giving that fade amount to a place where I like it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm really just looking at her hair at the moment and seeing how much detail comes in and out when I remove this fade point and how it contrasts with the skin because these these points all connect and tie together. So let's take the focus on this one, right? Check this out. It's You can obviously see a lot of attention is going towards her eye because it's really high contrast versus when I use the points down here then we're seeing the overall photo so it's about what do I want to focus on here and what's going to enhance my photo I want to reduce the black even more I think Oof, probably not too much I'm pretty happy with blowing out the whites as well for now we're going to even reduce it a tiny bit here we can actually add a bit more substance to the white in our RGB tone curve, oh sorry, in our in different channel. I think green might suit orange. So a bit of greenish blue. Let's bring it down to 98. So it's only a touch. And we're going to do the same thing with the blue. So we're going to make that teal color. Slightly teal, so we're at 98 here. So we've got that little bit of blue and that orange, which is going to make it stand out. Play around the shadows a little bit as well. See what works well. I don't want to over. It, obviously, it's a lot of warmth in the photo, so I'm not sure if I want to overload it with that. So I'm going to add hints of like a slightly cooler tone or something like that, just so we have a bit of contrast. Probably not in the pinks, in the greens. What do I prefer? I like this where it's just like more true to black, even though it's not black. This one gives back on a bit of blue, which I like. So that's reducing the highlights down. But I do like the shadows a bit more on the warmer side. So if I hit this, keep it here. And then if I wanted to reduce the shadow a tiny bit, 
have a bit more on the green. Actually, no, I think I just like it warm. Let's flatten this all together and just make it a tiny bit green again to 98. Cool. I like this. This is actually kind of too better than I expected. I really like this now. This highlight is a bit too much for me though. So let's try, I think, reduce it. We're going to darken it again. So we're going to hit the gradient here. And this is going to give more attention to the face because it's higher contrast. So it looks pretty good. So the difference that that made, I can turn it on and off. So before, where it's really light. So obviously it gives the photo a really light feel, which is which is good, but I don't I don't think it matches her mood. So which is why we're going to make it a little bit darker and focus a bit more on her face. This is pretty cool. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit of pop into her eye again. Bring all these stops down to half and maybe bring this clarity to half as well. So then and then we can see it's just made a bit more contrasted so we can see the eye a bit clearer. There you go. Great, so looking at these all together now, they look like a pretty cohesive set. I like that a lot. And I guess that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching a bit of my process and experimenting with different colors and locations. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and maybe comment down below which photo or which set here was your favorite. I'd love to hear back from you. If you wanna see more content from me, please hit the subscribe button down here and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.